From the swamps of Louisiana, the Cajun Predator. The day of the hairy freak, or the fat slob, is practically gone. Let the party begin. I've got snacks. Look at us, we did it again. Another seven days round the sun. Welcome to WSW Deep Cuts Live. As we get a follow immediately. Hello, Big Table 527. Thank you so much for bringing the uh the soda, still soda, and the still crackers. Welcome. Hello, everyone in the chat. I'm proud of us for making it through the next last seven days. I'm proud of you. This is WW Deep Cuts. My name is Tom Green. I'm down there somewhere around there. And for the next two hours, we'll be celebrating the forgotten quote unquote television classics from World Championship Wrestling in the 90s and 2000 as we are today. See a lot of great folks in the chat. Cajun Jungle Tigre. Hello, Brian. Glad to have you back. Hope your, uh, your stuff last week went well. Hello, refs as wizards. Look at us indeed. We didn't make it. Optimum Vision by a pro Subwoki. Uh, Renticus Maximus is here. Uh, let's see who else is here. I thought I saw a question while I was getting stuff prepped. Will Scott's is here. Soggy Hydrox, Rowan Fresh, dropping that erotic Eric Fontaine emoji. The reason for the season. Happy Easter to you, Cajun Jungle Tigre. Nathan with a Y. Of course, Nathan's got to be here. Nathan's here. Uh, what the heck? Hey, Peter Crawford. Hello. No mercy. The Submaster Supreme. Uh, Scott from BK. Thank you for the compliments. Um, the band is called Ozma. That record is called Rock and Roll Part 3. Uh, one of my favorites to spin. Um, yeah. So, what was I going to say? Oh, um, I'm here. I'm tired, but I'm here. Um, yeah, so tonight we're going to watch an episode of WCW Saturday Night from March of 2000. Um, but since the the episode, unfortunately no commercials this week. Because of that, it's about an hour and a half. So I got a fun, fun thing for us to watch first. Hey, Incident 73. Uh, before we do that, of course, the sponsor... That being Nitro, the incredible rise and inevitable collapse of Ted Turner's WCW. The expanded edition with four bonus chapters, a new forward from Eric Bischoff, dozens of new tidbits, expanded image section, uh, show formats and scripts, and over 100 footnotes to the original story. So if you're interested in getting that, again, I, uh, as I say every week, the best, most well-researched wrestling book ever. Um, I highly recommend it if you've not read it. Um, go ahead. The QR code is going to be up the entire steel right above my head. Um, so if you're interested, just go there. Use the code WCUCUTS for 10% off. And I get a couple bucks in my pocket, in my PayPal account. Um, I know that uh, Guy Evans just announced uh, he's working with David Penzer on a book just about the format sheets for like the B shows. So that is going to be a must read. Um, so yeah, let's get into our first thing before we watch Saturday night. Of course, it's 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 the fail safe. Whenever I have time opened up on the show, I'm going to give you some Family Feud. Hello, Scotland, Great Mister Green Mist. In the house this week, this Thursday, go check out Hitch Twitch stream 9 p.m. Eastern, the Pro Wrestling Potluck. He is doing uh, a YouTube themed show based around the YouTube aesthetic. Thanks to maybe Boost SEO, 
That's search engine optimization. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. I love. I'm in, I'm in Scotland's chat pretty much every week. So, and a lot of great folks in this chat are in his chat also. So, if you have fun here, you're gonna have fun there. So, 9 p.m. Thursday night. Yeah, the, the poses in the little circle. Tony's the master. This is the second episode from this set we've watched, and Tony's been great both times. Hello, Jax in the chat. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Do you feel the excitement in this room today? Oh, you, sh you absolutely should center that book, Scott. Absolutely should. Uh, Yes, 8 p.m. Central. I always use Eastern Time because I'm in, in the Eastern Time Zone. Selfish. Um, and to answer you, Nathan, I will be at Squared Circle Expo Friday and Saturday in Indianapolis. The number one TV man. I, I hope that's his job title at AEW now. He's working for Tony Khan as number one TV man. <laughs> you should post that, Brian. My Where the Impact storylines are going. Booklet. Pamphlet. Last time we watched Family Feud from this, this set, a few weeks back, um... For those of you who were not here. Hey, Refs is Wizards. Thank you for re-upping your Prime sub. I never beg for subs, but they are like my DECA. They are my steroids. I inject them into my butt. Um, so yeah. A lot of fun. Thank you so much. Give me strength. Give me strength, Refs is Wizards. Um, Sid is the most enthusiastic Family Feud player there is. It's wild. Uh, I will come see you at Brian Meyer's table, Jonathan. I was gonna, I was gonna text you later this week to see if you knew your assignment. Thank you, Steele. Kevin Sullivan is not number one. Yeah, he's not, not number one Booker Man at this point, but he would end up being number one Booker Man. Um, how many viewed episodes are there? I think it's like. Aw, Sid. I feel heartbroken for him. He seems genuinely sad. Um. Hey, Jake Bars. Glad to have you here. The toothpick deal. I'm going to turn it up a little bit because I can barely hear it. Stay here, Sid. Dirty, here's the question. Name something you usually do after eating a big meal. I'll watch TV. Let me see. Comb your mustache. It's there, but don't move. Oh, Kevin Nash, absolutely. Absolutely tried it with every single one. I think... The Farmer's Daughters is type the most. Okay, Jake, so uh, I mentioned up top, Saturday night's only 90 minutes. So I had to do something to fill the rest of the, the time. And Family Feud is normally it. Coffee! Coffee! Master Buster still wants some coffee! For calm on this stage, there's only eight dollars, gentlemen. I As I want to drop witness. something, so just think so you can get some points. Keep that oh, away. There, Tony. Something well, you usually do. Sleep's a good answer, library, Speedy. Probably be go to sleep. Yeah. Sleep. Speedy, are you type F if you're Tony Schiavone? Speedy. Good job. Kevin, we put some money in the bank now. Sixty-one dollars. Something you usually do after eating a big meal. Smoke. Smoke. Okay. Perhaps smoking. Sid, I, I I don't think I, Sid's got a rep for not showing up to things. Um, there was an AIW show in Cleveland a couple years ago where they booked him to do a guest appearance, and he like kept pushing off his flight and kept delaying it, and then said that he lost his passport to fly from Tennessee to Cleveland, and then blamed uh, the Trump uh, travel ban. That was going on at the time, or that was in the news. Who's on my 90s Enhancement Squad Family Feud uh, squad, rather? Brian asked. Brad Armstrong, he's experienced. Um, Bob Cook is a trivia master from what I've seen online. Um, hmm, the Gambler, 
course, he's a gamesman. Um, and then I'm gonna go Cole Twins. They would flirt with the with the glow ladies, get them flustered. Good old Keith and Kent. What do you say? Yeah, old Sid is the master of taking a booking and then finding any reason not to go. I know the softball thing's pretty famous, but yeah, lately he's just gone nuts. And for those of you who don't know, that's not Sid on Twitter. If you see, it's, I think it's Psycho Sid Vicious is the handle that just talks shit about Sasha Banks and Sean Ross Sapp all day. That's not Sid. Cajun Predator. I don't think Cajun Predator would be fast enough on the uh, the fast money buzzer. The dishes. It's a good one. Sid, Sid is. I want to just give Sid a hug. Let him know it's all right, bud. It's all right. People, this question. Name something specific. I have not watched the British Bulldogs a &E Legends. I don't really watch a lot of those. I don't know, like, I kind of like the Scott Hall one, but I, I, don't, I don't normally watch the A&E biographies. They're, like, they're on Sundays, it's a weird time. Like, I'm streaming every other Sunday, so. Horse! It is wild that you can... Every week, somebody notable says, hey, that's not really Sid, and people still freak out like it's Sid. Liberty, liberty, liberty. Oh, gosh. Remember, this is 1991. Cowboy boots. Let me see. Cowboy boots. Cowboy boots. <laughs> no. Now, Sid, think of that steal. Hollywood, what do you say? I'm going to say the brothel. The women. women. The brothel. Still alive. The bunny ranch. $74 coming right here. Name something specific. You would see in every old time Western movie, Kevin. Saloon. 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 He had a saloon. Yeah. Kevin Sullivan had a saloon. Stagecoach. Right. It's up to you, Sid. With them or out on Come on, own. Sid. What are you gonna say? Saloon. 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 Somebody in the crowd the shouted saloon, I think. A saloon. Yes, sir. Good. Booze. Booze is a good one. I love Shivani in the back throwing up guns. Like he's a little cowboy. Four. In an old time western movie, you see. Bar room brawl. Sid rubbing up on on power on power blaster, not power blaster. That's a movie I watch. Uh, Master Blaster Steel. He was on the WWE team. That's Kevin Nash, aka Master Blaster Steel. We got Tony Schiavone, number one TV guy. Um, Kevin Sullivan. We got Dutch Mantel. Not doing the soy face from YouTube. Though. Just like go look at all of his thumbnails. And uh leading the team is Sid Vicious. Crowd member was George South. Who is no only looking for Sting? Sting, he is all about meat and sting this weekend. I th I'd, I'd say the top three it would go Sting, Nick Wayne, and uh uh Jushin Liger, probably number three. But of course, Sky Blue. He loves Sky Blue. They're buddies. Uh, he really wants to meet Ultimo Dragon, too. That'll be fun. And we will be at the Black Label Pro show Friday night. There's a, the, the Dutch Mantel YouTube thumbnail face. And, and most folks who do the YouTube face at least will take different pictures every week. Dutch has been using the same picture for six months for every thumbnail. 
Um, we will be there Friday. Yes, Friday and Saturday. Very fun, yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. I would, I would say Nathan could sit with us, but he'll be around taking those cool videos. <laughs> Dude, if Brian, if I could convince Noli to watch Global, I think the PYTs would be his thing. Hot body, Randy Rhodes, Christopher Honey Love. What content does Dutch make? He, he's, he's a Jim Cornette type. All these kids these days, they do all these backflips. That's my imitation of his mustache. Let me see, cooking. Yes. Could be enough money to win the game. What do you say, Sally? Do the dishes. Could it be for do the dishes. She tried to do a southern accent there. Jackie Stallone is so over this shit. Pay his bills. Say quickly. Pay the rent? Well, you just said pay the bills. I asked the question. Okay. Something a man living on his own might ask his mother how to do around the house and didn't answer very quickly. Sid is so confused. Oh. Let me see. Pay the rent. She's committed to that. Paying the rent? I've been making like a million dollars for the last three years. Men close so men close, men close, dirty dutch. Quickly, yes, no sewing. They're going with sewing. Dutchman tell being a gamer on YouTube would be very fun. That that's a great idea. Now, it's funny because Tony Schiavone is a gamer. Like, he's. I've heard him talk. He's very into, like, Red Dead Redemption. And, like, games like that. Godiva. And she towers over him. We triple the dollar value. We will move very quickly. Top four answers are on the board. Again, something that would never happen if the WWE crew did Family Feud. They would never have a guy that much shorter than any of the women. Because of a weird Vince type fetish thing. Warranty. Let me see a warranty. Not there. Think of a steal. Here we go. Hollywood, you can win the game. Okay. You would order a sunroof. Let me see sunroof. Yeah, Tony just he, Tony Chivani seems like the antithesis of all the Don't say it. Of all the Jim Cornette types. Let me see. He just he's here to have fun. And he'll call a Yushi Garoshi if he wants to. Show me fancy wheels. Fancy wheels. Fancy wheels. One of the answers, they will win the game. China was like 510. She always wore heels. Air conditioning. That's it. Air conditioning. Air conditioning. You, you are still alive. So like they, they put her with Eddie specifically because Vince is like, oh, a guy shorter than a woman that'll emasculate him. And then Eddie made it work because Eddie rules. Two answers would have won you the game, girls. You should order number three. Cruise control. Cruise control. It's like me? Like he's acting like they called him down to play Price is Right out of the crowd. Like, no, you're in the game, bud. Name something that bees do. Hollywood. They make honey. Let me see honey. Number one, you think horse. Something bees do. Ray Combs. They sting you. Recently found out uh Richard Dawson's son was best friends with longtime lucha tape dealer uh, Bob Barnett. It would go down to Tijuana with them. Three seconds. Three seconds, Jackie. What else can they do? We'll see, Jackie. Liberty, something bees do. Make a beehive. They make hives. Whoever takes this question will win, Godiva. Sid is so, like, into this game. Yes, they do. Mouth agape. Not not doing the soy boy thing. Not the soy boy. The, the YouTube soy face. Oh, not doing that. He's just like really into it. <laughs> Since one dollar Bob. Long game, buddy. Right, come on, guys. Get over there. They do what? Pollinate? Tony? Doesn't know. Steal? Doesn't know. Swarm. Swarm? Quickly, Sid, one answer. Sid is so nervous. Good evening, LJH. Three seconds. 
three seconds. Let's swarm. If swarm. Not there, the global uh. are the champions. Show me swarm. Oh, poor Sid. Sid does not win. As the farmer's daughter is like jumping all over the set. I would not steal Dutch Mantel's hat. He might have lice. Pollinate. Guys, listen to Kevin Sullivan and Tony Schiavone. It is a very random team they have. Like, when you think about it. Like, the other ones, it's like Sting, Steiners, Road Warriors, Lex Luger. Like, the, the top guys. This is like, who really wants to play? Tell me on a scale from one to ten how good a kisser you are. Ten. Something that soldiers run. Ten, of course. Horses. Something driveways are made of. Cement. Your favorite fattening food. Ice cream. Something made of fur that a man might wear. Merkin. Quickly. Whoa. Okay, we can edit that. Turn around here. Tell me we can on edit that. Come on, it's cheating. How good a kisser you are. You said. Let go of her, you creep. Thirty-four. I see where that hand's going, Greek Holmes. Gross. Horses. Survey said. Spitting her hair out of his mouth? You're, you're way too close to her, buddy. Something driveways are made of, you said. Cement. What did the survey say? 19. 19, yeah. Your favorite fattening food, you said. Ice cream and the survey said. Yeah, Ray, I don't I don't like this. I don't like how close he is. Dawson was worse. Dawson would like do a whole our survey said like physical. Zero. You go back with your teammates. Quickly, we cover the answer. He's going oh my gosh. Hollywood, quickly, Hollywood. Hollywood. Quietly. Over the rope. Over the rope. Good luck. Twenty seconds on the Just pull down her skirt? Revealing her answers, we ask a hundred people. Don't touch to them the there, one, buddy. Kisser you are. Ten. Yeah, Dawson was Nine. very Nine. weird. Soldier before. rides. A horse. Try again. Try again. Pass, pass. Something driveways are made of. Cement. Try again. I'd say shoot some blue chew. Your favorite fattening food. Ice cream. Try again. Cookies. Something made of fur that a man might wear. What was that? Something made of fur that a man Screaming in her own teammates. Set a coat at the buzzer. Turn around. You've got four of the five. Here you go. On a scale of one to ten, how good of a kisser are you, you say? A nine. nine. The survey said 13. Ten was number one answer. Something that sold A lot of people with very high opinions of their own kissing. Yet. No points. Jeep was the... You're going to say what? Nothing. Okay. Jeep was the number one answer. Something driveways are made of, you said. Rock. The survey Rock. said 10. Some concrete number one. Yeah, concrete dollar. Points away, your favorite fattening food you selected? Cookies. What did the survey say? Five only. Ice cream was number one. Don't be sorry. One last chance. Something made of fur that a man might wear. You said? A coat. Coat. Wool Let's like see. Fur wool. What did our survey say? 34, a hat was the number one answer you have. Yeah, Daw Dawson would have been like, I don't trust your answer about that kissing. We need to, like, work it out. All right, let's see what we're going to be doing next Tuesday before we get into the, the meat of the show. Not that. This. Our minds are gone. My liver's probably shot. Going back to 1990 next week as I unmute myself. But we are now in the year 2000. With Frankie Lancaster. And our first matchup legend. Yeah, there is huge news in WCW. Let's lay it right out on the tape. You are just bursting at the seat. You're like a water balloon. Yeah, time for for techno grinding. With Scott Hudson and Larry Zabisco. And this is we are 
this is the second to last episode of Saturday Night. But here we go. Easy E. Eric Bischoff is back. Thank you for the Conan reference pickup. Really appreciate it. Tonight is the 23rd anniversary of the last Nitro. Thank you for that 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 trivia tidbit, Speedy. Saturday night was green at the end the last year or so. It was a, it was a rave. Like, feel. Hey, Soggy Hydrox, thank you for the follow or the follow the sub that No Mercy gifted you. Love it. I love it. It's giving me strength. I'm gonna be ripped in no time. The Maestro, very funny gimmick. He was a classical pianist who only knew one song. We are going to go into 1990 next week, Optimum. Look at this lockup. Lancaster and the Maestro starting us off here on Saturday night. I don't want to shortchange these two athletes, however, we are... Yeah, I don't want to shortchange the Maestro and uh, Frankie Lancaster. Well, for the layman out there, I mean, for, for WCW World Championship Wrestling... I see a little bit of Gary Spivey in there. Yeah, this, yeah, the Maestro was gorgeous George III. That's how he got his job. It was Randy Savage wanted the rights to the name Gorgeous George. He, he had the rights to the name. He was doing the gimmick on the Indies. Um, and Randy got him signed. At first, first Randy's brother Lanny was going to be Gorgeous George, and then Randy started dating the future George Frankenstein. A creative consultant for this very wrestling company. And Eric has been in I'll have to look. I, th I think Minotaur came along in like late 90, early 91. Yeah, we are firmly in that weird two week we'll period talk, we'll, we'll where Russo and Bischoff have been hired back, but they're not quite on TV yet, so everybody has to talk about them. Talk about how cool it is that we have new bookers within the context of a wrestling show. We will break it for you as it happens right here on TBS. Quickly, Sam Super. Ricky Lancaster, I think, was more trying to be a uh, hardcore Holly. Which, again, is a weird thing to do in 2000. I love Bob Holly. But it's just weird that of all the WWF guys that try to rip off, everybody else is doing Rock and Austin. He's doing Bob Holly. Stro Did the Stro train Jack Dax? That's cool. I mean, it makes sense. They're from the same area. The Stro's been around for freaking ever. Uh, yes, uh, Randy Savage's girlfriend, George, is the one who married Jerry only from the Misfits. Or would it, was it Doyle? It was Doyle from the Misfits. It's, she became uh, George Frankenstein. That was a awkward clothesline. Up, up, up. Hey. From Lancaster, Maestro is out. Symphony is beside herself. She is seeing her charge being dismantled here on Saturday night. Lancaster into the ropes up top. Float out. Go behind. Waist lock. Reversal. Into the ropes. Roll up. Can he hang on? Double no. cradle. He's too oh, far. I thought he was going to bump her. Like, that would have been awful. Distracting Lancaster. Schoolboy roll up. Maestro. The Maestro needed to cheat to be Frankie Lancaster. Frankie Lancaster, who had not won a match on television in his life. Maybe in like Continental or EWA at one point, but definitely not in WCW. I'm going to go to the club and grind my girl to the Harris Twins footage. Again, I love they go all out of their way, the new video, the, the song, the oompa song, and then Larry Zabisco and Scott Hudson. Jeff Jarrett, those two men, Hogan and Vicious, unite Monday night on Nitro, and they explode. The egos collide, legend. Hogan and Vicious are on an inevitable collision course. For the world heavyweight title yeah it was probably just a matter of time yeah to kind of put you put things into perspective in uh, not only 
WWF had like Triple H and The Rock on top at this time. I think this is around WrestleMania 2000. Kurt Angle starting to blow up, and uh, everybody on the roster is over. And so WWF is doing Sid versus Hulk Hogan on top. The package, and now Sid Vicious. Sid will be first. College chicks love white supremacists. Hey, I haven't looked at Ben Shapiro's numbers in a while, but you might be onto something. This broadcast, speaking of world titles, we'll go back and take a look at the John the Revelator. Yeah, Hogan Sid. Everybody wanted to see the WrestleMania 8 rematch. We'll be on the line in a flag match. Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Jericho was. The popping the uh, the radicals who had just been there like six weeks earlier. We got a Tank Abbott match on Saturday night. We have to recap the Harris brothers and the Mama Lukes. We cannot escape this match. We just watched them wrestle a few weeks ago on here. From that German pay per view. Yeah, Jim Duggan versus Fidel Sierra. They were like feuding. This is Jimmy Hart era Saturday night where Jimmy would actually like book feuds. Yeah, the TLC th stuff was happening at this time. And to just keep that all into perspective in the back of your mind as we watch Rick Fuller. Hey, Rick Fuller rules. I like Rick Fuller. I think some of the WSW tag teams from this time are pretty cool, Jake. I wouldn't necessarily say that about the, uh, uh, Mama Lugs. I mean, I like Johnny the Bull. The lower effect. Hey, basketball adult. Yes, Tank Habit, bring your shiv and stay a while. You might cut your beard. Yes, Brian, exactly. They, they wanted to make sure you were going to buy the pay-per-view. They couldn't give away too much. Of the Harrises and the, the Mamelukes. Good evening, Adam. Welcome. The demon. You see, the building's dark enough as is, so you just can't see him. Walk into the light, buddy. There you go. There you go. Now we can see you. Yeah, they, they're having to turn on lights. Because they realize, shit, we can't do his entrance when we're blacking out most of the arena anyway. Rick and Rock Fuller would be a dope. I, I think. I think you're onto something spooky. Rick Fuller, I think, was in Thunder. I hope I don't get a YouTube ding for. Uh, uh, God of Thunder. Though it's funny, you go back and watch some stuff on the network. They, God of Thunder's there intact. I don't, I don't know how. I assume they just didn't pay attention. But yeah, like the recount song is dubbed, the cat song is dubbed, but God of Thunder by Kiss is left in. And Rick, what a stern challenge. For the demon here in Rick Fuller. Well, it is because I mean, uh, Rick, Fuller, Rick Fuller's going to look. Yeah, the demon would go on to make, be a longtime right. hitting coach the in the major leagues. Figure, it's from the Marlins. Paint off and the uh, spikes and the whatever. Rick Fuller knows it's just another human being, and Fuller is much. I have a soft spot for the but demon. Hey, the demon has a large band he wasn't himself. great, but he really. Five. Loved Kiss. You can tell he loved Kiss. Like, that gimmick would not... I mean, it didn't really work anyway, but it wouldn't have worked if the guy was like, Ugh. I listened to uh, Sister Hazel. I don't know. Sets him out, shoots him all the way across. Full I know the deal Bischoff set up for the, the demon before he got let go. There were supposed to be four characters. One based on each member of the band. Demon debuted first, and then it just all got dropped. Great execution of the suplex on a large band. Brian Adams got an amazing shape for it. He was ripped. But yeah, I guess like. In front of the band, he's like, yeah, no offense, I don't like you guys. I don't, I'm not into your music. And then he got recast. 
to recover. No. Fuller just bending the demon over the apron and a chop across the chest. It just bullied him. I think you're right, Peter. I think Scotty Riggs Fuller was supposed to be one of them. Maybe maybe Peter Chris. You only have a certain number of seconds. He was supposed to be like Blood Runs Cold. Or like they were in their own little universe. But also like Blood Runs Cold, it just didn't work out. Brian Adams is too much of a static X fan. Had to come out to that song they wrote about pooping on your on your girlfriend. Uh, thank you, Nathan. It was that was a punchline I thought of at the last second. Saw a butter knife in the sink, and I'm like, you know, let's go for it. Appreciate it. You new YouTube short tomorrow, tomorrow morning. WWD Pit Shorts every Monday and Wednesday on my YouTube channel. Go subscribe. Yeah, Riggs, Evan Courageous was one of them because they had started something with him and Vampiro. And Johnny Swinger sounds right, too. And I feel like every every piece of copyrighted IP has had a team in Mexico at some point. I'm sure he will. I mean, I've seen dueling Ninja Turtle teams wrestle each other in Mexico. Look at that. I love that kick. The pirouette of death. Vampiro. Yeah, Larry would, like, kick you in the gut. He did, like, the TNA kick. Tremendous agility. The higher you kick, the less balance you maintain, so. And he wasn't rocking at all. He maintained no, his balance. For a big man, he's agile, brother. Hey, brother? I love that. Larry not even trying to hide his old man wrestlerness. Agile, brother. Yeah, there's a whole Super Mario crew in Mexico. Uh, Power Rangers. There's a Power Ranger team. Not to be confused with the Power Raider. From Southern Discomfort that we watched the other night on Off the Grid, which is archived on YouTube. If you want to relive that weird Alabama indie wrestling documentary. Oh, what a momentum reversal we've seen here. Fuller was down just moments ago, and now open handed chop. I love how there's so much money that has gone into the demon gimmick. And he's already at the point where Rick Fuller's beating the crap out of him on Saturday night. We're maybe a month removed from his special quote unquote main event match at Super Brawl. Up Love Gun. Oh, I thought it was a Love Gun. Oh, he's doing like a weird Undertaker thing. Al Homero Simpson is hilarious. If you all have never seen that gimmick, that the Lucha Homer Simpson gimmick. Because the mask is like nightmare fuel. That is an athlete to keep your eye on. Speaking of that later tonight. You can't keep your eye on him because the lights are out. The, whoever's running the spotlight behind them is really bugging me. Have they? They're just playing God of Thunder under this promo. They're like, shit, we have the rights to kiss? Everybody gets a kiss song now. Coming up on WCW Saturday night, it's the one and only Dark Angel, Vampiro. It was on a recent edition of WCW. <sighs> Thunder, WCW. That Live, laugh, lash, LaRue. Yes. I need to get that knit into like a blanket or something. This is the cat and Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones and me. Brian Pillman Jr. absolutely does have that haircut. Thank you, Assured Out Cubs. I love that cut. Yeah, this was, I, I covered this in a YouTube short a couple weeks ago after uh, Mike Jones passed. Yeah, he was just with, he was just with the cat for like a week. Two weeks, technically. Yes, this is the cat versus the dog. The real match that has happened. 
I believe we watched it before on uh, Scotland Green's Pro Wrestling Potluck, Mr. Green Mist in the chat. In Thursdays at 9. Go follow him. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad you agree with me, Ray. Yeah, Lucha Homer is scary as hell. I still can't believe that freaking Al Green got a gig because somebody was scared he would sign with WXO. This is after the James Brown cameo. This is about four weeks after. That was at Super Brawl. They didn't say, they didn't tell anybody James Brown was coming. They were playing it up like the cat was like clueless. He didn't know James Brown. It was going to be some silly comedy segment. And then James Brown comes out. I love this dude in the red shirt in the crowd with the mustache. Absolutely a guy that runs like a karate dojo, competing with the cats. Yeah, there was that weird period right after the Dudley started wearing camo. Where, uh, I think it was Kevin Sullivan put Ryan Nobbs and Cliff Fidley in camo. No, it was Russo did. It was at the end of the Russo run. Like late January. Hey, Westagon. Yes, Al Green does not care if you're some shoot fighter or some karate. His WXL promo is a classic. Yeah, it is wild that Eric Bischoff's son's karate teacher just got a gig in WCW and got over. That is the same Master Blaster. We've had two Master Blasters on the stream tonight. Don't give up. You got a reason to live. Looking like Greg Alexander from the new Radicals. That hat. This ought to be good. Is it wet food? I love the idea of a wrestler who's like, I don't want to do wrestling matches. I just want to dance. Dance for the people. Hello, Dreamcast Ultra. Hello, glad to have you here. Oh, the new Radicals are great, Peter. That whole album, fantastic. Get what you give. Get the, the, the whole album. There's, I just want to hear him say uh, Marilyn Manson would beat your asses. Something like that. 420 24 7. It's the year 2000, everybody. Do yourselves a favor. Look up Greg Alexander's band from the early 90s. It is fucking weird. Yeah, Greg Alexander ended up being like a writer of a lot of prolific pop songs. Alan Funk and Barry Horowitz going at it. One of those feuds I talked about on Saturday night. Oh. I thought the cat didn't want to wrestle. That would have been great if the cat did get a 1-800 clock commercial. Or even one of those WWE calling card commercials. It would have been great. Yeah, it's not just Barry Horowitz, it's bad Barry Horowitz. You know, he, you, he, you know that he's got something. He's bad Barry Horowitz in Global. In the winner. Bad Barry Horowitz here. Todd in the Shadows rules. I'm a big Todd in the Shadows guy. Not wrestling, he's fighting. He's, he, he is some type of karate. Also, I'm a big fan of Alan Funk coming to beat up Barry Horowitz, and then he just moves on. Moves on, has his match anyway. Yeah, this is insane. 
I mean, bless Jimmy Hart for trying to give some of these guys storylines, but this is bonkers. This is Russo-esque pacing, but with way more basic angles. That would have been fun. Do like a stomp type gimmick. Really like hats up the up his, his back. Well, that's a, that would be great. You know, yeah, see, the thing is, Scotland, most of these guys are not under contract. Like, Jimmy Hart was just calling guys that were available. Like, hey, do you want to come do WSW TV? Got Mark Marin in the crowd, apparently. Apparently, the cat messed up his own finish so bad that they had to cut to the crowd to cover for it. The cat can strike. He should be the snake. He can strike. At any time, yeah, Jimmy Hart was just like calling Fidel Sierra, and uh, you know, I think Barry, Barry Horowitz wasn't under contract at this point. Yeah, this is the era where WCW guys were just stealing all of the WWF guys' catchphrases and dance moves because it's like, who cares? I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell people to suck it. What, what's what's going to happen? Oh, and because they taped this week's in advance, Mr. Jones is not there to put the cape on. Yeah, they don't even have David Penzer doing the ring announcing on here. This is... I forget his name, but he's like an indie ring announcer that Jimmy Hart met in Florida. Mickey J is like, fuck this. These were not, these were separate tapings. Uh, Saturday night would have filmed in like, at this point it was like 500 seat buildings. And even then, as you can tell by how dark it is. Wait, WCW, the WCW Spring Breakout free better than Ezra concert. I would have loved that. Welcome back to Saturday Night and Legend. It has happened again. I got the official time outside. Don't yeah, no, these these were taped like way separate. Like once once or twice a month, they'd tape them like three or four episodes. He did it again. He who? Oakland got caught again. No, not that. Not that? No, it's not that. There's been another wholesale changeover in the corner office suites at WCW. Haven't you heard that? Wait, wait, wait. We got another brain of the week. Another brain of the week is in charge of World Championship Wrestling. You want the inside dirt this... on what's going down right this... I love how at this point they're even on TV like, yeah, yeah somebody's coming around the company for a week and then they're going to quit. It's the WCW hotline. There have been yeah, they did promote Vampiro for that next segment, didn't they, Nathan? The WCW hotline. And then he didn't come out. In any deeper hole here. With the new regime at WCW right now. Yeah, this is also the point where they're taping the voiceovers for Saturday night so far in advance that they can't hype what's on the hotline. Brian Nobbs runs the gauntlet of three count. Say it was an uncensored Brian Nobbs. Yeah, this is also the period where Jimmy Hart's having to like do Muzak versions of like new metal songs. For the hardcore title last Sunday night at Uncensored. Could Brian Nobbs defeat? I cannot believe a company with WSW budget used one of those ladders. Hey, Rack Diesel. I love the Nitro Spring Break episodes. Both when they were doing well and everybody was excited, and the sad ones. Who is coming up to this ICP song? Here they come. Here we go, JC Ice, Wolfie D, and the most backyard wrestler to ever wrestle on national American TV, The Frog. I still is only, well, that might have been motion, this is Brad's brand knobs. The Spring Break episode 2000 is the one where Hogan's, that's the wall, brother, and he's like in a building like a mile away. I'm I'm positive that's the jacket that, that frog wore to the building. It might even be the clothes that he wore to the building. The frog, for those of you who don't know, was Lodi's roommate. Like a North Carolina indie wrestler. If you go back and watch Nitros from like 98, Lodi would bring signs like, Frog, clean up your room. 
Or was Toad was his indie name. He does look like Dante Leon. That's a good call, Nathan. It says Jung. Kaz, Yang, and Jamie Yeah, you got Kaz Hayashi, who's like one of the Michinoku Pro like six. With Jimmy Yang and Jamie Howard, Jimmy Noble, Florida indie workers. Georgia indie workers. Very, very good. Feet, like Kaz is ripped, he's got a tan. At this point, he actually has a contract. We are beyond the point where he is not under contract, working for almost minimum wage, like he was his first year in the company. You see a tadpole? I think uh, Scott Hudson made that joke on Worldwide. He was a tadpole when he was a baby. Did he name him this like christening a ship where he hit him over the head with a bomb? EG 13 rule. I love that move. Some people should steal that move. Now we're gonna it's it's the year 2000. We're gonna get some some Ayah bullshit. Kazayashi rules. I'm a Kazayashi mark now. Such a good cruiser move. With the original power yeah, Jimmy Yang at this point, his only experience other than being on Nitro and Thunder was he was doing like Georgia indie shows at like some bar. Like he was, I, I'm almost positive he was untrained. Jamie Son is Jamie Noble's Young Dragon. They put a, a white dude from West Virginia in a mask with slanted eyes. I fucking love Jamie Dundee. Um, yeah, they put him in that mask. And people will think he's Japanese. Also, Jimmy Yang, very much not of Japanese descent either. But hey, you know. JC Ice. He is on fire on Saturday night. And the Young Dragon. Come on, tap the frog. Here we go. Apologies to those of you who are not, who are on ad break. You can't even hear me say this right now. Those of you who are here who have subs, still enjoying the frog. Does he do the splash? Look at Lars Abisko knowing what a high flying move is called. He just wiped out the frog. That's animal abuse. Call the FPCA. I think JB Dundee on Colt's podcast is the only time he wasn't like racist and super homophobic on a podcast. Hey, Stat, welcome. Just in time for the frog. Not at all. It's hardly perched at all. Oh, I know if I see a nine foot tongue come out and snatch a bug, I'm out of here. Like, I love Jamie Dundee, but the fact that he had a partner here in the frog who made him look like a big, giant, muscular wrestler is very funny. Hard on that top turnbuckle and the frog. Not a classic wrestling maneuver, but that is a good point, Brian. Right that frog. Jamie Noble is making Jamie, Jamie Dundee look like oh, the, the much more sophisticated look at you. Jamie Noble, who, while as an agent for WWE, like maybe 10 years ago, got stabbed at his trailer park. I don't know if y'all remember that story. Got into an argument with somebody in his trailer park and got stabbed. People don't give PG-13 enough credit for being cool moves, guys. Holy frog. That would be very funny if he's like, I'm the master of the leapfrog. And he does the leapfrog like they do in No Mercy, where like he can do it and the guy goes flying out of the ring. That's a great finish. The Makar 12. Oh, jeez. Springing off the back of Yang. Gotta be kidding him. Wolfie hit the road. Frog hit the corner. EG13 ruled. One of the great unheralded teams of all time. Yeah, Jamie Noble got stabbed. It's like it's like 2010, 2011-ish era. Like he was he was a WWE road agent. Oh shit! He almost broke his neck doing that swan He got so much air. Jimmy Yang has his like first TV paycheck haircut. 
Oh my gosh, she's eliminated. That would be so great for the leapfrog gimmick. Roanoke Redneck says the guy in the crowd. Jimmy the Bull's like, yeah, I, I see you. Why is he pointing at Jimmy Yang's mouth? My boy eats a lot. Jimmy Yang's only 19, I believe it. I think... I think there's a story that Canyon had to, like, wait. Like, Yang had been hired about a year earlier for that Cruiserweight Saved by the Bell show. Uh, but, like, Canyon had to wait because he really wanted to get him hired, but they weren't, they weren't going to hire a 17-year-old. So, yeah, it sounds about right that he's about 19 here. Tommy Rogers, former one half of the Fantastics. But I don't need to tell everybody. Tommy Rogers, Kurt Gadzooks employee. TV screen yours to see how fantastic I am. But the only thing I'm missing is some gold. And that's why I'm here. I'd say you're missing a, me like a pink top that? underneath that shirt, buddy. Coming up next Maybe on pants? Saturday night, the man, the mountain. Me and all the honey is going to go grind to the wall. The train wreck. Hey, Troy Vang. Yes. PG-13 and the frog. And Kazayashi does have a tan because he's finally getting paid. Jimmy Yang rules. Jimmy Yang is one of the... He, he doesn't get enough credit for being like a crazy bump guy, but he really was. Tommy Rogers ruled. But just very funny seeing him in this era of wrestling. Like, he was at ECW before this. He was in ECW in like 97, and he was really good. But it's just, ah, uh, he's one of the Fantastics. It just feels out of place. Did you see that evil, maniacal look in the face of the wall? He loves ditching out pain. He loves to throw people through tables. I love that that's a wrestling thing. This guy's psychotic. He loves to pick people up and throw them through furniture. That was unbelievable. I want to see it again. Yes, he had the Tamikaze, which at the time was such a cool one. Comes Kid Romeo with his glow sticks. Yeah, Tommy Rogers, it's, it's a shame he wasn't taller. And again, the glow sticks are just like, it looks like he got them at like the dollar store. They're not bright enough to really show up very well on TV. You can kind of see them. And one helicopter. And coming! We talk about it earlier, Legend. Let's explore. Yeah, Jimmy Yang, after he was done with Eric WWE developmental, he went to all Japan. Did some cool right stuff. Flying Elvi. This is the second bucket hat in like three segments, Russell Woods. Yes. Vince yes. This is the year 2000. Jeremy Lopez here, uh, a Dean Malenko student, he came up with Jamie Noble in like the Florida Indies. Pretty decent. You know, he didn't do that thing with like the glow necklaces that you get at like the 4th of July fireworks where like you have to like kind of like bend and crack them to like really get the glow. He didn't do that with his glow sticks. Well, a little history for those of you that may be new to the world of professional wrestling. There was a time when Eric Bischoff took over World Championship Wrestling back in 1993. Jer uh, uh, Jeremy Lopez started wearing the red shirt after he uh, trained, or not trained, uh, toured with Osaka Pro in 2001. And I know he wore like a red Ichiban shirt. I know what you're talking about. World Wrestling Federation like a drum. That just say what it is. Call it fact the fact. Troy Nelson, Troy, Troy, Troy Nelson, that's my friend Troy. Um, Scott Hudson's like, yeah, Eric Bischoff beat the WWF. The WWF skyrocketed, and you can lay a lot of the credit for that right around the neck of Vince Russo. This is such weird commentary. Yeah, we we were doing way better than the WWF, and now we suck. But we're going to not suck here in a couple weeks, but right now we still suck on this show that you're watching. This show sucks, but in two weeks the show will not suck anymore. But you know, when, when Russo came in, well, let's back up even further than that. When, when Eric Bischoff was still around, we were seeing another, another the veteran referee. established stars in pro wrestling. Men Thank like you, Hulk Troy. I have so much useless knowledge up here that I can never use. 
anywhere else. So these streams are great. They were the focus for me to of the WCW product. Out. When Vince Russo was at the helm as the powers that be, we saw the younger talent get the push as it were. Get the push, you know, because this isn't real. What you're watching right now, that chin lock right there, they're talking to each other, guys. They couldn't beat the Flares and the Hogans and the established guys. And the reason this was trying to keep some semblance of kayfabe here. I know you don't know. Listen to me. I'm a legend. Scott's like, no. They got pushed. Somebody wrote down on a script that they were going to win. giving the younger guys, the new generation, a shot at superstardom in world championship wrestling. Like, I love how smarky Scott Hudson would be on commentary sometimes, but he definitely went too far, and this is one of those times. Though I'm sure part of this is direction from Russo, like, bro, you gotta talk about how much I love the young guys, bro. Who's gonna be the focus of WCW? Will it be the established veterans, or will it be the new guys? Well, I don't know. It. Well, it couldn't hold them down. It, it's going to be a lot of individual choices here. I mean, the people don't realize what a monumental change this is going to be for the company. But do you want to look at facts? Look at facts. Whether you like Bischoff or not, when he was here, it was mega business. Absolutely. I mean, whatever happened. Mega business. I, I still don't know. I golf a lot. But when oh, was shit. Here, Sweet Tiger Driver. Couldn't hold him down. Well, when Russo it is not here, a Tiger Bomb, despite what Joey Styles would have. Bischoff was here. Well, I agree, Tiger Driver. Now that you agree that Bischoff may be more smarter because he was raised in the business a lot He was more longer. smarter. Learn me some more, Larry. Is when Vince Russo took over from Eric Bischoff, we weren't at the mountaintop anymore. Eric took us there, but we we're just straight up having like a ratings debate. Like, they're, they dubbed and Meltzer and Brian Alvarez over this match. Not that kind of saving, but we didn't get a chance to know. Now we're gonna Someone's going to start com like Eric complaining. Bischoff Where's the video package is at? I don't know who these guys are. They work together? Will they work together? And who or what will be the focus of World Championship Wrestling? There were bright spots at the end of WCW. But they were a victim of their own success. They couldn't go down as far as they needed to to come back up. Let's, this, let's get off this subject. Shot. Let's not shortchange these athletes in the ring, Jeremy Lopez and Kid Romeo. You're the one that started the I rumors. I did, and I apologize. Not the rumors. Gut wrench up top. Lopez float out, escape by Kid Romeo. I feel like we've seen like five missed power bombs. Oh shit! Where the lights bomb jammed them up. Boy, I tell you what. That's the thing about these power plant guys. They couldn't really put together a match, but they had like two or three moves that looked like they killed you. We got sidetracked with Bischoff and Russo, you, but Romeo... Yeah, we got sidetracked doing a podcast. Coming up next, the Rage and Cajun, Lash LaRue, and the King of the... See, Lash at least kind of looks like he'd be in this club. I want a, an oral history of the rave shoot for the Saturday night opening credits. Romeo owned. We're a kid Romeo. He went to WWE Developmental briefly in 2001. Um, he kind of kept at it for a bit. There's the famous story that he, uh, he, he showed up at a TNA, because he was doing TNA enhancement stuff for a bit when they first started going to Orlando. And he, uh, he was working as, he was legit working as an exterminator. And he tried to pitch them on the idea of him being the wrestling exterminator. So he lets a spider loose in the locker room to kill it, to show everybody what he does. And Jim Cornette's there, and he's, like, deathly afraid of spiders. And Cornette, like, jumps up onto, like, the top of a locker, trying to get away from it. But we're just re-airing a match from Thunder, but in a tinier box. Shit, Chavo. Ooh, that was cool looking. Probably didn't mean to do it like that, but that was cool. Why does it look like the security team is like up front? A bunch of dudes in yellow shirts. Oh. Bobby Heenan sounds like he just woke up. Ooh. 
ring mat looks nice, but I always heard wrestlers would complain because they would slip on the logo. By the way, shout out to my SSRI gang. Gonna take my meds for the night. The artist formerly known as Prince Iakea. Seriously, this background is bugging me so much. The flashing lights and like the like the honeycomb effect. Bow, bow. Chavo Gross music always sounded like a sitcom, like opening credit song. Bow, bow. Bow, bow. And now Chris is Very cool, Jonathan. Yeah, Chris Candido rule. I'm glad he's getting his quote unquote flowers, as the kids say. Now that we've just re-aired a match on Thunder, let's go back to the ring. That man is going to run roughshod through the cruiserweight division straight to the top. And the Here we go. The Tommy Rogers. In his shirt that he got from Gadzooks. Surprised he's not wearing a uh, female body inspector t-shirt underneath it. Yeah, Jimmy Yang worked Noah last year. Um, I think his daughter did too. Tommy Rogers against the Raging Cajun. A lot of heat between these two. Come on, Scott. Really? They have issues in the locker room. <laughs> so why are they're wearing the same shirt but different colors? Is that where they have heat? Don't read this as stupid. It's a good sign. Don't read this. This is stupid. Oh, it's Fat Tuesday all over again. Out go the beads. I am trying to lose weight. You can see Tommy Rogers more of a the establishment type of enemy. He comes out. He's got nothing fancy on, but. Got good movement, good balance, a lot of experience, and very little nonsense from Tommy Rogers. Lash, uh, much more of an emotional kind of guy. Absolutely. Like, I'm surprised, like, Russo being the porn weirdo he was, I'm surprised he didn't, like, there. bring Tommy in Rogers Tommy Rogers as a wolf hunter at any point. But look at Lash. No. Into a hammerlock. Go yeah, yeah, I saw Lash make, like, a little comeback last year. But, oh, I love Brahavan. Welcome. Straight down to the bottom floor. Oh! Thanks for making me feel old, brother. Man, this I was well going on 13 in this area. Oh. Look at that! That was a dope suplex, like a weird wrist clutch suplex thing. You know, very strong. He's got good balance. A nice snap to that pump handle there. It's a painful little maneuver if you yank it up. Yeah, right. happy birthday, so bro, man. Right Yesterday. Oh, LaRue hit hard in that corner. And Lash LaRue. To the middle rope. Whoa! Doesn't make too many mistakes. But oh, like, like a Northern back. Lights jackhammer. Two count from Lash LaRue. Modified version of the Northern Lights. I love how there's a point almost every week where we all realize how old we were when this is on. And there's a couple young folks here that make us all feel old. Oh, 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 oh. Body drop over the top to the apron to the floor for Lash LaRue. It looks like Rogers hit his back on that apron. That's, that's painful. We've still got Tank Abbott in action. Then Piro is here. World Television Championship is at stake. Oh, oh he, I mean, he kind of hit him with it. That's the veteran shining through and no Lash LaRue hit his face on the apron. He caught a drop kick in the ankle and his beak hit the apron. LaRue. His beak. Is that one of those insider terms, Scott? Like heat in writers? Yeah, I glanced over and I thought you said you were a janitor, John. Yeah, I was a janitor in high school at this point. What grade is a janitor? Oh. The second time LaRue's next snap back like that, the raging Cajun is down. Lash LaRue is down and almost out next to the guardrail. Tommy Rogers. 
both men wanting to move up the cruiserweight rankings and get a shot at the artist formerly known as Prince Iakea. But a lot of fighting there, outside the ring for just like a mid-card TV Candido match. Also. Rogers with a right hand staggers Lash the roof. The kick <laughs> that one. Cut Rogers to the right and another. Here we go. Here we go. It's a mid-card match in 2000, so somebody has to have three punches and a funny dance. Tommy Rogers is like, I will not do your Attitude Era song and dance. Here's the thing, Brian. You are a young, handsome, virile punk. Young looking. So... 46 is the new 30 for you, Brian. I don't know if it was too late, but it just WWE just felt so cold at this point. WWE is so hot. Like, most of their stars were, like, big wrestling or otherwise. And WWE just felt so uncool. He got, he's got him in the middle now. He slipped away, pushed him off. Oh, it Whiplash is. 2000. Who is the Whiplash 2000? Is it over? It is. Flash I've heard a lot about your balls, Brian. Whiplash 2000. I read the oh, newsletters. Nice move, a good snap on the neck by Dave's Lash typing Lashley. from his sources. He doesn't have sources in AEW anymore, Jeopardy, so he's going to have sources about something. Speaking of Jeopardy, coming up next, coming up next Alex Trebek. Speaking of Jeopardy, that segue was very bad. Oh, she's showing her hip. Guys, she's showing hip. Yeah, New Japan these days is... Like, you just, you just can't... I don't know. As, as good as things can be. Like, like I liked that uh, that War Games match they did last month. But it's like, what now? You know? Like, theoretically, that should have been a good match, but I bet it wasn't. Like, Finley's trying. Suspended from the ultimate fight. I love this weird point in, in culture where we don't quite know how to talk about MMA. Do we call it cage fighting? Do we call it no holds barred? Do we call it the ultimate fight? Human cock fighting? Yeah, Fit was another one of the, the, the camo guys. Again, it's like if you line up the TV, it's like almost the same time the Dudleys started wearing camo. So did Fit and Nobs. Yeah, Finley's good enough that they can trust him with more than just the punch, but even then, that's it, match over. Why'd he just stomp fit in the hip? That was mean. New Jack started wearing camo before that. New, New Jack has always said that the Dudleys ripped him off. And then the Dudleys like dissed him in a rap song. We're sending Doug Dillinger and some indie wrestlers to break up Ming and Tank Abbott. Might as well just like build the ca the caskets right now. I think it's wild that Finley kept the leather jacket he wore in WCW and then just wore it as his WrestleMania gear that one year that he had a singles match with JBL. When most guys would like buy new gear, he's like, oh, I haven't worn this in a while. It looked for all the world like Ming was giving Tank Abbott all he could handle on Thunder. Here we go, Dave Burkhead, one of my favorites. Dave Burkhead, one of the funniest indie names. 
Uh, in the Indies, he was known as Knuckles Zandwich. He had tights. He had real, real gear at one point. And then he just started wearing jeans. For some reason. It's not a matter of being tough. It's a matter of now being smooth. Of being smooth. Just a few rough edges to sand down, and this guy will be unstoppable. Against Tank Stop Abbott. Fighter. It's Tank it's Abbott against his fighter. own dollar Tank store Abbott. figure when ripoff. You've got a man who wants to face Ming. That's a man. Yeah, Dave there Burkett, he was a, like a Ming. Massachusetts right. indie Tank guy Abbott who got right. in tight with Kevin Sullivan. And so he just got booked on all these shows. And he's terrible. I mean, I'm pretty sure Tank Abbott is better than, than him at this point. Bobby was not on Nitro anymore. He uh, got the, the heave ho the previous month. Got traded in for Mark Madden. Deceptively strong. He says, you, don't, you can't imagine how strong yeah, again, it's deceptively is. strong, he says, as we it's see his giant freaking shoulders. I admire Tank actually trying to have a match here. Good on him. Oh, you know, the, the offense that Dave Burkhead needs to get in on Tank Abbott. Yeah, Tank Abbott looks like a guy named Tank Abbott. There we go. The punch. Good on Tank for at least selling the, the eye pokes. I guarantee you, Brian, that Dave Burkhead and Rick Fuller drove to this show together. And I'm sure Burkhead in the car was like bitching the whole way. Why won't they push me? That is Roy Gunn on Tank Abbott. Pull a knife on him. Nothing to do with Mean Gene Okerlund, despite what you try to say every week on this broadcast. It has everything to do with the new regime at World Championship Wrestling. I know exactly what the scoops are and what the reality is. I know what the scoops are. I have an Observer subscription. Pick up that phone and dial 1-900-909. Again, they, they started pre-taping me so far in advance they couldn't tease Mean Gene's actual update. Maybe Gene's got it on the hotline today. 1-900-909. 9900 it's the WCW this is going hotline. to give me a seizure right now, legend, let's send it back to wcw thunder from last wednesday night There's, they they did not tape nearly enough stuff between vampiro the dark Angel, yeah russo and bischoff are like on their they've they've signed to come back and they're teasing it vampiro watch for the interference of team package watch for the interference the of team package this is wednesday night Thunder. Team Package is one of the funnier things that he said you did at this time. Ric Flair and Lex Luger with Liz. What name should we give them? How about Team Package? Yeah, I might as well have just said, told you guys, hey, we're going to watch Thunder. Because that's, that's what's happened. Like, why do we need a replay of this match? We're going to watch him wrestle here again in a second. Yeah, there are a lot of allegations. I'm, just, I'm glad you clarified there, bro. Totally Buff was a very funny name. I love, I love when you take, like, an adjective from one person's nickname and a noun from another person's nickname. And that's their team name. Totally buff. Pretty wonderful. That's that's two adjectives and stuff. That's jealousy. Lex Luger is so jealous of Vampiro. Ric Flair out there in fucking flip flops and a Hawaiian shirt. Team Air Boom, yes. Team Hell No. Now, that was such a bad era for Team Mills. Seriously, like, why is Ric Flair dressed like Jimmy Buffett? God, the Brothers in Paint was such a dumb team. They paint their faces 
So they must be best friends. Imagine the coalition of painted face warriors in like 1990. Yeah, there was no real. It wasn't really so much booking in this era as it was who's going to do a run in to set up the next match. Jonathan put it on the put it on the bingo card. We got an Armstrong, Steve Armstrong, who is dressed like Brad as Buzzkill for some reason. Like, what is happening here? I don't think his brother's even doing the Buzzkill gimmick anymore. I think I think Brad's done. Like, shit, I have to rip off a gimmick we literally just dropped. Pretty much the Sting and Darby thing. They are also the brothers in pain. And I, I, and that, that was a little silly. But Sting and Darby made it work. They, they seem like they liked each other. Whereas Sting and Vampiro, I could not see those two even having a conversation of coffee. Again, stop turning off all the lights. We cannot see the people coming out. What is Abisco trying to make Vampiro's case for like most improved wrestler in the Observer Awards? Punishment, like hardly anybody, you know, can tolerate pain. I hate pain. I like AEW, John. I'll agree to disagree with you there. I'm an AEW guy. Vampiro here. Vampiro. That'd be. If Russo would have heard him say said that name like that, he would have ended up doing a golden shower again. Vampiro, like Pierre going onto the ocean. Vampiro, a vampiro, a vampiro. Yeah, I'm not surprised Sting shot down a lot of that angle because I'm sure Vampiro was like, "What if I put you up on a crucifix and then we set it on fire?" And then I'm like, I'm the new Jesus. Things like, dude, I'm fucking born again. I'm sure that's what happened. I'm sure that's what the angle was. Large or Oh shit! That's how you blow up both your ankles. Jeez. Conan was over. The problem is the way he wrestled. None of the top guys would have been able to like do anything with him because he was he just did this weird style. Not even really lucha. He would just grab your body and like put it in different like weird positions. Like if you watch half of his submission holds, he just seems like he's like, what the fuck am I doing? With your body. Oh! Hey, those two fans were very excited for that cool spin wheel kick. And now we're starting the match over. Possibly, Conan would have had a little more room to move around. He always seemed like he didn't have enough room to do the rolling clothesline. He always, like, meet up with the guy at a weird spot. Oh! Conan at this point was trying to get fired. Hey, Mr. Bluestein. We just spoke with you earlier today. Glad to see you pop in. Welcome. Nice to see you. Chris Daniels is supposed to get involved with the Vampiro and Sting feud. Um, I did, I, it's another one of my shorts that I did recently. It was going to be like Vampiro's higher power. Um, Russo wanted to name him God. And then he figured out that you can't trademark the name God. And then a bunch of other stuff happened. Chris Daniels didn't get the spot. But he was on TV like twice. In like his, uh, his fall angel gear with like a, a sheet over his head. Watching each other's back. And this may be the friendship, or rather the alliance. I know you say there are no friendships in wrestling. It might be the alliance that... Yeah, put him with uh, Oklahoma. He can be G-A-W-D God. By God. In that situation, it was team, it was team packet. Exactly. Nitro versus... Cord. <laughs> God, I'm kidding. 
extra leverage, the knee between the shoulder blades of Steve Armstrong. But this is not the same medicine Armstrong had on him. See how flexible Mr. Armstrong is, because if you're not flexible, Every your shoulders just pop word. right out. Jimmy Hart's undefeated monolith Hale will be in action later on. World Television Championship will be at stake. Yeah, Dan Chris Daniels, like the idea Russo was, he wanted to do the higher power gimmick with Daniels, and he didn't get to do it in WWE, so he wanted to do it in WCW. Like, if you watch Russo's, like, first six months of WCW booking, he's just redoing his WWF stuff with different actors. Pretty much. A lot of second Aunt Vivians. I mean, the cat was the godfather for a while. And then kind of walks away. Wait a minute, shoves the referee. I'm wasting shot. time here. You got to keep your eyes on your opponent, Vampiro's getting up. Staying in the crop buster. The top, is up. Oh, kicked him right in the nips. Side kick on the landing. Steve Armstrong is over. Hey, Armstrong took his eyes off Vampiro. Vampiro won with the titty kick. Seconds, and that was a big mistake. Again, this guy thrives on pain. This guy thrives on pain. I'm so happy we're past that dumb, like, late 90s attitude era gimmick. Oh, this is this guy's goth. He must love pain. Again, we need... I wish there was footage of the Better Than Ezra concert, like, in the WCW archive in the WWE library. I wonder which WCW wrestlers went to the Better Than Ezra concert. Start the cold shower. It was on WCW Thunder that Los Fabuloso made their debut with this yes. Okay. I, I'm glad that Scott is at least being horny for El Dandy and Silver King. It's a little less gross than if he were like, Oh, Miss Hancock legs. Yeah, one man's gang's belly to belly was the gourd buster. But also like the front face suplex is the gourd buster. I'm still so bummed with this idea only out of a few weeks. Like this, like I get that Vince Russo is like allegedly a giant racist, but like this seems like it'd be up his alley. He'd be able to write like his little fake comedy sketches. Which is keep your mind on either your monitor or what's going on in the ring. I don't need a monitor. <laughs> yes, the, the norm bit from the guy. Watch what's this match. Oh, double dribble. Dandy drew the face with the leg drop to the back of the And this is the era where Lodi and Lenny Lane were doing like a fake Hardy Boys gimmick. Is excess. Anyway. Well, please tell us about your long-term plans. You must have something in, in mind for Los Fabulosos down the line. Oh, I have plenty of things planned for them. Early bird. Silver King could wrestle. Al Dandy is, like, legitimately oh, an all-time great. That's good business. That's huge in your head. Look at the move. Like, it kind of sucks that he became a meme because he's so good. I genuinely think Norman Smiley would be at the better of I think. I'm trying to think who else would be there. Maybe like a Shane Helms. Like he seems like a kind of hip hop head. But it's free. He's not making much money. Uh, Gene Okerlund's there, but he's not listening to the music. Open bar. Oh man, could I watch this hand? Fuck is this music? Oh hey, it's friend of the account Chuck Coates. No, I, I had the uh, pasta with marinara sauce actually, but thanks for Chuck asking. Coates very. Chuck Coates. I've, I've gone back and forth with him on Twitter a number of times. Had a Chuck, number of very nice exchanges. Long time uh, enhancement wrestler in wrestling. WCW. Going back to like 1990. Usual mistake of the inexperience. You have already underestimated this guy. Every time oh, I post something about Hale, he likes to. Off. Immediately, like within seconds, reply about how much he hated this match. I have no doubt about it, but look at what he is up against. Jimmy Hart? No, it's the monster, the monolith. I will say, when Jimmy Hart was walking out, it kind of seemed like he was going to be the one wrestling. 
That jacket's kind of sick, I'm not going to lie. Not a guy you're going to miss if you're uh, looking over the line to get on an e-ticket ride. That would have been great if he came out wearing everyone's coat in the locker room, and that's why they all hate him. And Jimmy Hart, he has taken so many athletes to the very top in pro wrestling. And he tells me, he tells anybody, he tells everybody, this is the next big thing. Hail is a big thing and with Jimmy Hart's guidance big thing I did do a short on Hale you just saw your uh, walk between the ropes. he was gonna be like Hulk Hogan's yeah, personal Hart opponent people, like when Hogan had this idea after WCW to like just tour as himself like the Hulk Hogan show an like the XWF and all no that oh geez um He's already got a first class seat. And it just, it just didn't happen, but no, he was under personal contract to Hulk Hogan. Putting the boots after WCW. The the end of the world. What is that? Big hailstorms. It's here. Check it off your list. High vertical. Boom. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Poor, poor Chuck Coates. Why? And hail. What a monster. Jimmy Hart. Like, how do you even, like, suggest doing that? Yeah, so um, we're going to lock thing. up, hip toss, hey, and then I'm going to paralyze you. It's the pile drive week after week. Yeah, he's like a very tall warlord. Oh, oh shit, that pile driver. That's just like Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff used to do. Go ahead and call out the dirty guys. <coughs> It's funny you bring that up, Dean McCarr 12. The last, the, the, I think it's the week after this, the last Saturday night, they actually ran like a like a hail, like weather warning crawler during the match. That was pretty cute. Jimmy Hart, congratulations. Over the top. Jimmy Hart, congratulations. Your jacket is fucking dope. Hail has another notch on his belt, and Jimmy Hart has one more reason to laugh. Maniacally, Hale is your winner, and that isn't even doing justice to what he did. The the stretcher guys are the, the EMTs are like, we'll wait on you, Mr. Hale. Saturday night, the ladies will be in action. They're referencing Paul Orndorff because the the pile driver was his finisher. It is the WCW World Heavyweight Championship and Legend. Right now, that belt trying all these funky camera angles to like zoom out from. He is in the crosshairs. Of Hulk Hogan. You know, Mr. Vicious got himself in a big pickle. The more you shoot off your mouth, the bigger it gets, the easier it is for your opponent to shove his boot down your throat. And Hogan is going to have his chance. Because if Sid Alan Glacier should have teamed. Yes. Hulkamania, he'll make himself a like they should, they should have done the thing where like they hugged. Hulk and Hogan then has worn the world John Tinta comes out as Avalanche. On many, many occasions. However, this time, Paul Orndorff uh, was running the power plant stabbed this time. Hogan in the back on Nitro. Paul Orndorff now, was with Hogan WCW until revenge, they died. And he wants another reign as world uh, heavyweight champion. In like he came out of retirement in like September of this year. Hogan and Sid he did like a like a Survivor Series uh, style tag uh, match in a paper. I think it's Paul Bush. You're up, man. Let's go. You're up. Or like he he gave right himself now. a stinger What's doing a pile of and like, they had to like stop a pay per view because he needed to be stretchered out. Hale Gush, I, dude, if, if, if Hale hadn't have passed, I'm sure that would have happened at, at a King of Trios for Chicago. I, I don't, they even did the press conference thing from WrestleMania 8. Seriously, come on. I don't even remember that part, but that's cheap. That's cheap. And I say this. Seriously, Scott? He's being censored because he said bad things about Ric Flair and got sent home for a week. This is literally just the WWF angle. Like, almost beat for beat all over again. And I love they did a bitter workhorse heel turn with Sid Vicious.
with me and Sid because I want this thing done when I get out of here. Hogan! See, I get you! That, I, I remember that. Yeah, the announcement. Like, yes! Yes! yes me! He just it's a Jimmy brother! It's an NDA. It's his passport. He can't fly to Cleveland. You know, Oklahoma has reinvented the ladies' division in world championship wrestling. And toward oh, that's right. This is that weird period where Ed Ferrara took himself out of the ring. So he's like the commissioner of the women's division. So we have Dede Venturi and uh, little, little Genie. Lil Genie is the mobster lady. Dee Venturi is the the gal cosplaying as Sean Hunter from Wingy's World. I think that was like a three-week recap. Not just yeah, like not just Thunder. I am not answering anything close to that question. You you just spread rumors. You know things are bad in this era. When, like, they've just recorded cat calling into the women's entrance music. Yeah, this was them actually trying to rebuild a real women's division. Like, uh, Mona was under contract, but none of these other women. These are just indie wrestlers that Jimmy Hart found. Oklahoma did win the cruiserweight title, and then he had to vacate it. Uh, when Russo bailed, or when Russo was kind of, he quit and was told you're being demoted at the same time. Um, and then he became the commissioner of the women's division on like Saturday night and worldwide. Yeah, there's you you would have no real reason to have memory of any of them except Mona, Miss Madness. The rest of them, like I think this is uh, was it Fantasy is her name. I think this is her only match in WCW. Like Dee Dee Venturi and the little genie were around to do like Saturday night matches with Mona. That's about it. And yeah, little, little genie did work that that weird Australian pay per view with Rodman and Hennig. Dee Dee Venturi just tossed little genie back into the ring. She wants no part of fantasy. They just might have gotten an old fashioned argument. You know, you start, no, you start, no, you start, but pushed her out there. Well, that's, that's not Yeah, true. Mona's giving away Oklahoma's some feet here. Yeah, Mona did wrestle barefoot. I agree. I don't know why, but she did. And tis the season. Oh, oh, what was that? It was an arm drag that kind of turned into like both of them power bombing each other. Being lead cheerleader from the corner. Right yeah, the WWE Women's Division was just who could be the most naked. Like, those women didn't have a chance. The shame. You know, at least Jimmy Hart tried. There you go again. Genie. And that could have been worse. One of them could have, like, been paralyzed. They're both walking, so... Larry Zabisco just like, yeah, I pull women's hair all the time, don't you? Fantasy is moving into reality very quickly. Genie, knee into the midsection. Oh, look, Diddy Venturi, talking the life out of fantasy. Well, the, Mona's trying to get in there. Yeah, Mona's she's getting up. frustrated, but she's got to keep her emotional. Little genie keeps pulling up the sides of her pants. Like, not, not like her pants, but like the sides specifically. It's very weird. Fantasy. fantasy has carried the mail for her team thus far. Mona, yet to see action. I question that strategy. Back press. Fantasy. <laughs> Larry, Larry is jealous of anybody with a full head of hair because he hasn't found, was it eugenic? Not eugenics. Uh, but the, he, like the hair plug company that he, not Morphoplex. Uh, but no, like he had like a hair plug surgery in TNA. And like they did an angle about it. She's going for a figure four. She is. Sets her up. This one might be over. Just like that. Wonder if she got yelled at in the locker room. Like, Stop doing Ric Flair's finish. No, it wasn't Rogaine. It was like a hair plug treatment. Like some doctor in Florida hooked him up with. But like in exchange, like they did it for like free. 
but they had to do an angle on TNA to like plug the place that Larry Zbysko had his hair plugs on at. I think Chavo Guerrero had it, had the same hair plugs put in. He's not dead if she can roll over and make it to that rope. She'll be much better off. She's rolling over. She's going to reverse it. Fantasy. Can she make it? Like, I will say this. They're at least letting these women wrestle. Which is, again, a lot better than anybody else was doing at the time. Outside of Japan. She's in control herself. She comes storming in there. Referee's got to take her back out. Here we go. Fantasy's in position. She, she was, like, matter. literally within inches. Neutrogenics? Maybe. That sounds familiar. Neutrogenics. RMT off. Neutrogenics. That sounds familiar. That means you don't realize, you know, where you are in that ring. I mean, you're in trouble. I think Matt Morgan had it done, too. So, into the corner. And Dini Venturi just yanking the hair of fantasy. Like she's not in enough pain. I think he brought in Jamie I know, I know Dee Dee Venturi and uh, Little Genie were in like the same pack with like Malaya Hosaka and Lex Fife, who he did book. So like I don't know off the top of my head, I wouldn't be surprised if Dee Dee or, or, uh, or Dee Dee Venturi or Little Genie ended up on like an early show. show. I'm sure he would have loved to have had Molly Holly Mona, but of course she was done by that point. Genie and Dee Dee, well, they're both flying out there. Mona's going to town. Oh, is she clearing house? Now putting the boots into the midsection. Cleaning a house. Come on. Come on, Larry. You get it. You're an old man. Exactly, Brian. He's tall. He had great physique. Who cares if you're bald? There are four empty kitchens. Oh, Larry. Oh, Larry. I'm sure one of those empty kitchens is in Chase and Rance's house. And you wouldn't know, buddy. The Hogan rule sign? That fan hoping Hulk Hogan shows up on the Saturday Night Show. Yeah, that was a fine match. Fine match. Nothing, nothing, other than that one arm, arm drag, nothing wrong with it. Three weeks ago on this broadcast, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. A three week long the feud for the World TV well title on Saturday night. There's life in the Hacksaw. Hacksaw, he moved his face around, he got the pressure. Yeah, this is the, the janitor period where Hacksaw Jim Duggan is the janitor of WCW. He's hacksawing up. No, but see, no. Duggan blocked it. He won't go into the turnbuckle. Back elbow. Oh! Oh, the Grand Tour, all the way up. The Grand Tour, In the corner mouth. Oh, there look at he him. goes. He is raining them down. But El Sierra. Yeah, Hogan would show up, do the ear it's thing, like and say, I love oh, Jimmy Hart, brother. And then walk to the back. Axel Duggan. Well, maybe this time we'll win. Down into the three-point stand. Nailed it. Sets him up. The old glory knee drop. The and old glory knee drop. drop. Oh, but the old glory pin. Hey, Drew Bog, welcome to the chat. It is. It was a funny gimmick. I'm not gonna lie. Jim Duggan doesn't get enough credit being for being smart at wrestling. And now is the part where you cue in Bobby Heenan laughing. But he always knew exactly how what people wanted to see out of a Jim Duggan match. He knew how to be Jim Duggan very well. Wearing the belt backwards, I love it. Yeah, Hogan and Savage worked Saturday night like in like 94, 95. Once Nitro started, you rarely saw those guys on the show. I saw Jim Duggan's doing conventions with like the 
WWF King gimmick, which I think is fun. That's a lot for Hacksaw Duggan to give up if he comes up short against Fidel Sierra. But they were walking around with the flag means a lot. Yeah, exactly. Jim Duggan beat cancer, and he came back to wrestling, like, right after. And he just seems like, he, yeah, like y'all said, like he's having fun. Having fun in life. USA forever. I think he just wants to go back. Cuba. Yeah, Saturday Night at one point was like the show, and then Nitro shows up, and like it's not even the B show after that. It's like we've talked about this story throughout the two-hour broadcast. Yeah, Jim Duggan seems like a guy that realized how short life could be, and he's just living it to the fullest now. Him and his wife, and he loves his wife so much. It's so admirable, like how good of a, how much of a wife guy Jim Duggan is. Fidel Sierra is opponent. Because, you know, we were so mad at Cuba in the year 2000. Duggan's like, fuck you, we're starting this match now. Very jealous, kid, Joe Tiger. That's badass. I'm sure his hands were like giant, too. be more late breaking news about this situation at the top of WCW. That does include possibly more changes at or near the top of this wrestling oh, right company. Oh. You will want to I love how Larry Zabisco like didn't make a peep during that like six-way cruiserweight match we watched Will earlier. But as soon as Fidel Sierra gets thrown to the pole, he loses his shit. May be on their way in. WCW.com is your source for That's all the wild. Like, as is the WCW only knowing Monday, some of these guys World as Champions this version of them. One way or the other, like, I could, I could definitely see what you'd be like, oh, Will Russo sucks. return, and who may be back with them, and who may be out the door? You know, it might be me and you. There's another question, too. I mean, who just may walk out of here? Like, the thing about Jim Duggan is, like, if he was in good enough health to work now, he could still probably do this match. With a lot of wrestlers and other employees, I mean... There could be a big abandoned ship. Yeah, Jim Duggan's one of the few guys, like, he does all these cons and you never hear anything bad. Everybody's always happy. He's happy to see people. Talk to you. A fun guy. Can they get it worked out? We'll find out Monday. All I know for sure is you got two guys. Should be a DQ for ramming the guy's head into the board. Come on. Put two cats in a croaker sack. That's what we've got going now on. we're just hitting Bishop each other with, with poles. Are we going to call any DQs? Or is it like a phallic-shaped objects match? I've heard that about Hillbilly Jim too. I remember the uh, when I was little. The the woman who ran the video store down by my house went to like a, a video like store convention, and he was there representing Coliseum Video. And she said he was talked to her for like a half hour. She knew nothing about wrestling. They talked about country music. Like she he signed like fifty different things for her. after one thing, and that's what's cashable. Good point. Sierra using that middle rope for extra leverage in the reverse chin lock now on Hacksaw Duggan. He's a sneaky guy. And he knows pulling he pulling on a balding wrestler's hair is always a fun little the spot. Left, whenever the referee puts his head out of position, and he's smart enough to take his feet back down off the ropes. The important thing is Come on. on the neck Where he's like, fine, I'll let it go. Just this Hacksaw once. Hacksaw starts moving. He's <coughs> trying to wrestle a bull. I knew Jim. I knew. I knew Billy Jim had a show in Sirius. That's cool that he still has it. That reminds me. Twitch censoring the word hillbilly. Uh, Noli downloaded a uh, Kanosuke Takeshita create a wrestler in the new WWE game, and because of their cuss word filter, it blo It like blocks off the part of his name that's like take a shit. Right so, like, when he comes out to the ring, the little Duggan. graphic says, Kanosuke, bunch of asterisks, ah. Big power slam coming up from Hacksaw. That woke up the Richter. Sierra, oh, is he staggered? Duggan, 
Backs him into the corner. Corner mount from the hacksaw. Raining in the right hand. That thing Sierra. must have been so and hot to wrestle in. Like bowling balls. This is what Sierra tried to avoid. That bodysuit. Wait a minute. Hang on. He's going to beat him with a metal pole. There we go. Finally. Jim Duggan gets the win and keeps the television title forever. Bless him, man. Looks so happy. Well, I think he's a happy man now, but wait till we hear what happens Monday. Hacksaw might be one of the guys getting some pink slips or getting his belt taken away. He found the belt. The powers that be hated Hacksaw. True. This guy may not be in, he may not be around here. Enjoy it while you can. And he gets the Cuban flag, too. That's not fair. That's not his. That's the Cuban flag, Hacksaw Duggan. I thought I heard somebody say that he, ha he has the TV belt, like, uh -oh. in storage somewhere. Oh, no. I don't think Ricky Ricardo would be happy right now. I don't think he's still with us. Is he dead? Hacksaw Duggan. And this is why that shit with Elia and uh, Gonzalez happened. Monday night. Uh-oh. Sierra's furious. His face is his chaperone. Monday night, much more about Bischoff. And Russo, this is and this is why the world doesn't like us, Americans. All right, and we're out. Tilt that a little bit. All right, thank you all so much. As my computer's doing a thing that I don't like. Um, thank you all so much for joining me on this voyage tonight through space and time and history. Um. I appreciate you all giving me the last two hours of your life to watch some weird, bad 2000 WCW. But we made it through. Um, again, I talked about it earlier. If you are in the Indianapolis area, uh, come hang out at Squared Circle Expo this weekend, Friday and Saturday. I'll be there both days. Not as like a, a person signing autographs or anything. I'm, taking my son to go meet some wrestlers but if you see me come say hi if you don't it's vibes man um again next week we're watching a couple episodes of wsw pro from march 1990 much different time in wrestling and we're gonna have commercials um i'm gonna talk 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 while the ad break's going on um Hey, Space Ghost. Yeah, show's over. Sorry, bud. But it'll hopefully be on YouTube in the next, like, 90 minutes or so. Um, if you want to relive it. Um, what else is going to say? I was going to say something else. Yeah, shout out to the Fontaniacs, the chat, the Erotic Eric Fontaine fan club, aka the chat. Thanks to everybody who has followed tonight, everybody who has subbed tonight. Um, thanks to everybody who's been supportive on, with the YouTube venture. Um, we're up over 11,000 followers, subs, whatever the word would be on there now. Uh, doing a lot of cool things. Again, another YouTube short tomorrow. Um, I think it's, I think the one I'm going to post, I've got a few ready to go. I think the one I'm going to post is going to be, in my opinion, the dumbest WCW news story of like, of all time. But I'm not. I'm not streaming next this Sunday. No, no off the grid this week. No off the grid next week due to WrestleMania. I'm gonna watch that with my son. Um, so no off the grid this Sunday. No off the grid next Sunday. It'll be back in two weeks. But I, I don't know math. But hey, as I always like to close these with, um, even if you don't make it here next Tuesday, let's just make it to next Tuesday in general. You know, just seven days. Well, I'm asking. I'll try my hardest. I hope you do too. This has been WSW Deep Cuts Live. My name's Tom. Um, good night.